Are you a .NET developer and think that embedded development is complicated and hard? Well, we'll prove you wrong today, at least Laurent will prove you wrong by showing you how to connect .NET Nano Framework to Azure IoT with just a few lines of code. Magic. That's today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. This is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for joining. Uh, today, I have my friend Laurent was here to discuss .NET Nano Framework and how to connect that to the cloud. Laurent, welcome back to the show. How are you? Hey, Olivier. All good. Thank you. So for those who have not seen that first episode of the IT show with you, there was the introduction to .NET Nano Framework. So we will not go through the introduction again, because everyone can go and watch the video again. But uh, tell us a bit about yourself real quick. What are you doing? What is your team working on these days? So uh, I'm working in uh, Microsoft for commercial software engineering, and I'm uh, leading a team of software engineers, and we are focusing on doing co-engineering with our largest customers. And a lot of our scenarios uh, does involve uh, IoT. So that's what we are doing. Nice. So last time you gave us an introduction of .NET Nano Framework at a high level. Uh, so we got to see you know, how .NET developers can develop for microcontroller devices. And before we jump into how you can do more by connecting these microcontrollers running .NET code to the cloud, um, you, you actually had some interesting comment in, uh, in our preparation meeting about why would someone want to do that? Why would you want to run uh, you know, code on microcontrollers. I think like we we get that at a high level, but why would we want to bring .NET on microcontrollers? Well, if you're a .NET developer, you like .NET and you understand it's a very productive language. Uh, you can do things very quickly. And uh, the other element is that um, if you're a .NET developer, you can develop from the cloud to a PC, to a small device like a Raspberry Pi, for example, with .NET IoT. And then, then the next one, it's clearly MCUs. And today, with .NET Nano Framework, you can do that. You can have this continuity. So it won't be the same code that you will run in the Azure Data Center uh, than you will run on your MCU. But the C-sharp competencies that you will be uh, um, able to reuse are there. So that's really about reusing. The other element, it's about connecting MCUs to the cloud. You say, like, well, I can, you know, can connect those MCUs to, um, to the cloud. And one of the uh, elements is that they've become much more powerful and get much more network coverage as well in all places. Like, you take, like, this little ESP32, with, which is, I will do a demo um, later on. It can connect to... Uh, uh, Wi-Fi. So if you have a place covered with Wi-Fi, um, you can get those things connected, you know, very, very quickly um, uh, and connect them to uh, to the cloud. So why not? Why not? Why not? Exactly. I think, as you were saying, definitely these microcontrollers are getting smarter and smarter because they're more capable. So we can now, instead of uh, forcing people to do embedded development with C code and or sometimes assembly, um, which can become very complicated real quick. Now we're abstracting all of that with this kind of frameworks. Um, I love that. And and as you were saying, connectivity is becoming more uh, you know pervasive as well on these tinier devices with technology consuming less battery because battery is definitely a big problem there. But uh, okay, so we'll see. We'll see. I think you and your team have been developing an SDK that allows connecting a .NET Nano Framework device to Azure IoT, to the cloud. But we'll see that. Um, but before we jump into that, can you give me a little rundown of the state of Nano Framework? Um, sure. you know, where are you guys at? Yeah, so .NET Nano Framework uh, works on multiple platforms. As, as you can see on the screen, we do support like all the ESP32 families, all the STM32 family, um, some of the Texas instrument as well, NXP. So you really have a broad range of, uh, of processors supported. And when I say support is that uh, you have, of course, the support for the board, but you have as well uh, the support to run uh, .NET Nano Framework. And to connect to that, and we can see that in a demo later today, there is a Visual Studio extension that you have you install. And then you can uh, see your device, connect to your device, uh, debug your device, you'll see it's magic. Um, and there is as well a test, a unit test framework. There is really all the tools that you are used to have. 
Nice. So embedded development has a reputation of being complicated and hard, and and uh, it involves you know wiring, soldering stuff at the same time as manipulating registers and low level memory and whatever. Um, let's show .NET developer how it's done using their favorite language uh, and their favorite tools. Uh, show us how you connect a .NET Nano framework device to the cloud now. Okay. First, I'll start by maybe explain a few concepts about what I will do. Here, I will use a service, which is an Azure service um, uh, called uh, DPS, uh, that's the nickname. Uh, and it does allow you to provision devices to the cloud. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, you asked me before uh, that uh, why connecting uh, devices to, 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 to the cloud? And I say like, why not? But that comes with a with couple of, of, um, of elements that you have to take care. Managing your devices, provisioning your devices, being able to revoke devices if you have any issue, security issue, and doing more things like that. And um, this service allows you, so this device provisioning service, uh, DPS, uh, allows you to do uh, those kind of, uh, of things in a very transparent and very easy way. Yeah, yeah. there's so, someone actually was uh, was presenting DPS saying the device provisioning service says, saying that it's the concierge for devices. Devices yeah. come in to DPS, they identify themselves with some unique piece of identity, and then they are given the keys to an IoT hub, to a gateway in the cloud instance yeah. that they can then connect and communicate, right? Exactly. And here, for example, I will I will show how to provision an individual uh, device. So I've prepared that a little bit so that it can go faster. So that's the nano uh, DPS device. I've created it uh, with just a, a symmetric uh, key. And uh, it has not been yet on any uh, IoT hub. Um, it's supposed to go in my IoT hub, like the Sellerback IoT uh, service. Uh, I go in this one. I will try to search for this device. This device is not here. Okay, okay. so this device does not exist. Okay, okay. I just just in a field. Now, what I will do is I will go in Visual Studio, and I will launch um, um, this code. I have to my device uh, connected. It will do a bit of of magic, and I will try just to 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 comment first. What you can see. Is so the code the code you're showing here is available on GitHub as a sample, right? So you have the SDK yes, cells, and then you have this. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. In a very detailed sample, and as okay. you can see, you know, it's C sharp nine style code. I'm using Visual Studio 2009. I have my folders. That's C sharp, right? I mean, like okay. no doubts about that. And uh, from from the registration service, I have. And then my registration ID, the global ID provisioning, the scope. It's basically my own um, DPS, and then this beautiful key, which I just uh, copy paste uh, a bit before. Yep. The, the deployment is happening um, uh, on, on, a, on a device. Uh, it will finish uh, very soon, and it will start connecting. The first thing I need to do is connect to my Wi-Fi uh, to get some cloud connectivity. Once that's done, uh, I, I have the Azure certificate that I will be able uh, uh, to use in order to use SSL. I mean, SSL is supported on, on those kind of, of devices, in this case, uh, SSL, uh, TLS. Uh, and the debug is now um, uh, starting. Then I will create a provisioning service. I just pass my, my, my secret. I will ask to register the device. And if all goes right, you know, my status should be uh, green. So now it's connecting uh, to the Wi-Fi. We can, we can see that uh, on the bottom here and very soon it should uh, it should uh, get uh, connected. So while it while it's doing that, so Laura, while it's doing that, yeah. so there's a couple of things you mentioned that I think are interesting to um to to double click on. Um, so the the SSL part uh, that's a part that is interesting because we do require devices to encrypt communication yeah. to to connect to the cloud. So that's the reason yeah. why yeah. Um, the the time is important. People sometimes forget that. Uh, when you establish an SSL connection, you need a token that has an expiration date, right? For security reasons, you need to, to create a token that has an expiration date. And so if you don't want to have the, the expiration date to be in the past and never work for the token, you better have the right time. So you need to sync the time on the device. These tinier devices don't have a battery, don't have um, you know, a, 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 a knowledge of the time unless they synchronize yeah. with the server. Um, so these are the things that I think are important to mention. 
Yes, and here you can see like I get the the, the time, the dates, and uh, yep. what you can see is that multiple threads run, and I'm hitting a breakpoint here okay. in my in my code. So uh, something people might not realize: you're running the code on the device, yeah, and you're debugging from cool. Visual Studio on your dev machine, and this is something that mm -hmm. in the embedded world is not trivial. This is something that very often requires advanced uh, hardware like JTAG debuggers and things like that to make this happen. Here, you're doing that from the comfort of Visual Studio on your machine, uh, connected over USB, and it's certainly exactly. serial over USB or something like that. It happens exactly. behind. Yeah. And, and you're just doing breakpoints and step-by-step -step and things like that in Visual yeah. Studio, and you cross the bug, right? Yeah, absolutely. And here I can hit continue, for example. So uh, it seems like my connection went well. I'll get all my details, okay, the status, the, the different information. What you haven't seen, but in the meantime, it gets connected to, uh, to Azure. So I created my, my Azure connection with the okay. credential and with the information I got from my, my DPS. I open that, all good. And here what I will do is I will uh, get my twins as well. So before I get the twins, I need to show you that in the portal on, on right. the device. So we will quickly check that the device has been provisioned. So I, I click on, on, on the device here. Um, and I will show you some more magic. Huh? So um, okay. my device has been connected. It's the, it's the, the, the time in, in GMT that match with the time you've seen uh, just before. And here, there is this concept of twin. So the concept of twin, it's really properties that you can give to your device and your device can report as well. So for mm -hmm. example, uh, if there are some specific settings about some pins or about some naming or about whatever, you can give that to the device. Yep. So that's provision as well. Now that's what I want to get, okay? So I'll just click play. And here I should see appearing my twin. Okay, so the, the TPS service is not just provided credentials to the device for it to connect to ITR, but also sets an initial configuration for properties in the hub for that specific device. So that's what you're Absolutely. Okay. And if I go back to the portal, and if I try to search for my device, this time I will have my device. Yep. Okay, I have my device here. I can click, I can do the details of the device and I can go and check the twins of the device if I want. And that's going to be the same twin that we've just provisioned. Fantastic. Okay. I can make a change, then it will get the new twins. Uh, but in the meantime, I have uh, my twins uh, in there, like just the thing I asked to have, like nano SDK something. It's Fantastic, nice. magic, right? Yep. And I can continue, I can send message. So this is how simple it is to send a message. This is the first one is, is a text message. The second one is a JSON, like it's a manually done JSON. Mm -hmm. But there are a few things I haven't I haven't shown you. First is that we have a lot of nuggets and there is a JSON nugget. All the magic that happen when I click um, um, play um, before and when it connected to DPS and all the exchange and all what happened, is based on a couple of things. First, the JSON one, second, mm -hmm. the MQTT uh, um, okay. worker that we are using. But this is totally transparent. You don't need to know that. You just connect, uh, you just hit play, and that's good to go. And if I continue, hit play, then the message will go to the cloud, and my device uh, um, is available to do whatever you want. Now it's connected. Nice. Very nice. And yes, as you just emphasized, or just mentioned, uh, you have that SDK that's layered, that abstracts the complexity of things. Because at the end of the day, someone could implement you know, their code on top of a MQTT client, right? Which is that protocol we're using to communicate. Absolutely. Here was with your uh, recently released Azure IoT SDK for Nano Framework, this yeah. is this is one line of code. I noticed that you're actually also using namespaces that are very similar to the one we're using in the in the, I would say big .NET SDK. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So developers can also consider migrating their code pretty easily, right? Exactly, and that's what I wanted to highlight and to show as well is that those the definition of the functions are almost the same. So it's not the same uh, code. You cannot just copy paste run. Yeah. But you can copy paste. add just few percents play. And you are, you, are, you are good to go. Something else as well I'd like to mention is that here I put the secret in the code. That's usually no good. 
And so, of course, we do support as well um, certificates. So I have the exact same sample, which I won't run uh, with, uh, with certificate. I've put the certificate here as well in the code, and that's no good. Um, mm -hmm. But there are a couple of tricks. It's that with Nano Framework, you can upload your certificate without having to upload your code. There is oh. a configuration panel in the Visual Studio extension, and that you can do as well programmatically, where you can upload device certificates root certificate, and then you don't have to put anything in your code. So if That's you nice, the device... Usually when you when you take advantage of an OS like big Windows or Linux, you yeah. have a certificate store yeah. that the apps can go feed from, right? And yes. here what you're saying is that, is it the nano framework that offers that cert store as well? Absolutely, yes, yes. Right. It's a feature from nano framework. And that's done on this purpose to be able to have um, the capacity to uh, revoke certificates, flash new certificates on a device without having to refresh the code. Fantastic. So that means that you can have a device that is flashed in factory, um, actually thanks to DPS and that search store, uh, where you have the SSL connectivity through the search store in that search store. And then you can have an enrollment in DPS that leverages certificates yeah. Have a group enrollment, have your yeah. your search for that group enrollment in that store, and then the code being generic on, on the device that leverages that to do the authentication with DPS. Uh, uh, you can uh, you will sell devices all around the world. You don't know where they will be. And with DPS, once the device connects, you can select an option which is the lowest latency. And if you have multiple IoT hubs all over the world to reduce the latency, then the device will be able to get connected to the one which is uh, the closest to where it is. Awesome. Cool. Well, Laurent, that's a great demo of how to connect uh, a device using .NET directly on the device to the cloud. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. Uh, I personally am impressed. I love what, where uh, where the Nano framework is going and what you, your, your team and yourself are doing there. If you want to learn more about what you just saw and the SDK for connecting a nano framework to Azure IoT, you can go to aka.ms slash IoT show slash nano framework Azure IoT. Uh, and if you're a .NET developer, uh, it's this time of the year where uh, .NET Conf is soon. Uh, so don't forget to sign up for the .NET conference. I think it's November 9th to 11th or uh, something like that soon. Save the date for .NET Conf 2021, November 9th through the 11th for the .NET 6 launch. .NET Conf is our annual free three-day virtual developer event co-organized by the .NET community and Microsoft, sponsored by the .NET Foundation and our ecosystem partners. For three days, you'll learn from featured speakers from the community and .NET teams at Microsoft talking about .NET 6, c -sharp 10, Azure, Visual Studio, and more. This is your chance to learn, ask questions live, and get inspired for your next software project. We've got wall-to-wall -wall content for web, mobile, cloud, desktop, games, services, libraries, and a variety of platforms and devices, all with .NET. Everyone is going to learn something, no matter if you're just beginning or you're a seasoned engineer. Don't delay. Head to www.dotnetconf.net. That's .netconf.net to learn more and tune in. So sign up, go get some more content. There might be some nano framework content during that .NET Conf, um, but we also are thinking about what can we offer as an event as content for you .NET developers when it comes to IoT. So feel free to come back to the IoT show, ping us, uh, and Laurent, thanks a lot for your time today. I hope to see you soon again on the IoT show for more about nano framework, right? With pleasure as always. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.